released this week. Joseph Bruce Hawker. Bruce, good morning to you. You were Kevin's strategist on the day. You were there when it all happened. Was he totally bl uh, blindsided like he claims? Uh, he was, David. I remember going into his office just after question time on the day and uh, he told me that uh, he was getting reports that you know, numbers were starting to be counted and he was quite shocked uh, and rather dismayed by it and pretty angry as well, I think. Yeah, look, we, we talked to you in the aftermath. You were angry as well. Mm. It happened two years ago. Why are we hearing about it again now? Well, I think the only reason is that this book has come out and, frankly, I think it would be good if we could all move past it. I don't think it's really helping Labor for old wounds to be opened in this way, but I think it's referable to the book. Yeah. All right, well, it seems the faceless men are still running the Labor Party. The same factional power broker who helped overthrow Kevin Rudd has been involved in another coup. Uh, Penny Wong, arguably the best Labor politician in South Australia, has missed out on the number one spot on South Australia's Senate ticket. Mm. The place went to Don Farrell, one of those faceless men who helped Gillard become Prime Minister. Uh, what does this decision say about the party and the need for reform? It says everything about it, David. The Labor Party really runs the risk in the longer term of becoming quite irrelevant in the whole political process if it doesn't really go about reforming the way in which it pre-selects candidates, uh, the way it goes about getting people into the party and encouraging the best talent. Uh, it's not going to affect Penny Wong's prospects of getting elected at the next election. She will be uh, a successful candidate because she's number two on the ticket, but it just goes to the heart of what's wrong in many ways with the internal structures of the Labor Party and it's something that they're going to have to have a real hard look at. We really have to open up the party to many, many more people. It's far too inward looking at the moment and that's largely you, you referable. Blokes, you blokes have been saying that for decades. Nothing's happened. Well, I think it's been papered over quite successfully in the past but now it really is a serious problem. If you yeah. look at other progressive parties around the world, you know, they're starting to do very, very innovative things when it comes to party membership. You know, they're uh, opening up with primaries and other ways of getting people into the party. Okay. Labor's only got about 30-something thousand people in the party right now around the country. That is basically uh, making it impossible yep. to operate as a party on the ground on the day of elections. Uh, but uh, hey, speaking of elections, the latest news poll out today shows Labor drawing level to party preferred. Um, that is a pretty staggering result considering where they were six months ago. This is very bad news for Tony Abbott, David. Uh, no one would have thought that that would be so bad for him. Now, if I was him, I'd be sleeping very uneasily at night. Uh, his whole success has been built around driving down Labor's vote. It hasn't been a problem, really, that he's driven his own personal vote down as long as he's driven Labor's vote down. That's not happening now, and I think the Liberal Party could well start casting around for an alternative uh, to Tony Abbott if it keeps going like this. Before the election? Indeed. OK. All right, Bruce Hawker, thank you for that. Pleasure.